Hi guys, welcome, welcome to the 2X e-commerce podcast. Um, it's me again, and um, I'm here with Michael, uh, Michael Yang from On Don Watches. Um, if you listen to the previous episode, he took us in depth into the story of how he built his eight-figure business and um, a D2C business in that, and it's fully customizable, very, very fascinating. Um, I had lots of questions to to ask him, and um, yeah, he he answered them quite nicely. A very, very agile um, you know, um, company, I have to say, given the fact that, um, they're driven by watchmakers. So they customize every single watch despite them being direct to consumer at a fantastic price point, I have to say. Um, so Michael is based in Hong Kong, as you already know. And the fact is that, um, there was a coronavirus which started in China and Hong Kong felt the effects almost right away. Um, where in the month of, um, April, pretty much. It's the last day of March. Um, and I really want to know how Q1, January to March, has been, has affected, you know, um, the growth, the supply chain, marketing, and, and sales of the business. So, Michael, welcome again. Hi. Hey, so, Michael. yeah. So, basically, yeah, on, on, on the coronavirus. Actually, you know, started in China. It didn't felt that close, you know. Uh, it was actually during the Chinese New Year break, you know, so everyone was ho on holidays. Um, the lucky thing is we were stocked up because of the Chinese New Year. So technically in China, during the Chinese New Year, people take a long break. Mm. So there will be a shortage of, um, of inventory if you don't stock up be beforehand. Mm. So we were lucky to have enough stock um, to actually uh, go through this month. So we, although there were delays to future orders, we were actually lucky to, to, to still have some, something to sell. Mm. So we were not so impacted on the inventory side. And also luckily during this uh, coronavirus was uh, originated in China. So most of our customers are in Western countries. So they're more like in the US, UK, uh, Europe. So they were not so affected neither. So our initial Q1 from uh, January to March actually wasn't bad. We are still uh, experiencing growth. I think the real setback, it's only like within this week, we are seeing a little bit of slowing down. The reason it's because of shipping. Uh, there's so many lockdowns in the Western world. So or some cities don't even have deliveries. So what, most of the post office will be so, not so delivering. Yep. What are your top five um, countries for, for, for cost? Uh, we are like, uh, will be US, UK, uh, Japan, uh, Singapore, Hong Kong. These are okay. our top five. Okay. So initially it was okay. Now we are seeing some orders in uh, in the states to be uh, kind of stopped in the middle, stuck in the post office. Yeah. You know, we have some packages stuck for like two weeks without wow. being delivered. Yeah. So some of these, you know, some customers are not happy with these. There are some cancellations because of these delivery delays. Um, there's nothing we can do. It's because of the situation, okay. you know, and Just because they, for, yeah. for listeners, um, where have been the most troublesome spots, um, for orders in the States? What state is, is New York, given the fact that New York is the, yeah, New York, California, these are our major cities that we sell right. to. And that's where that, that's where it's, uh, so the post they get in stock in New York and they get in stock in California at the minute. So. Yeah. And even, um, the post office in Hong Kong has stopped. It's not taking new shipments oh, for okay. mail because a lot of the flight cancellations because post office don't operate a fleet of aircraft. aircraft yeah. So they rely on other carriers and all the other carriers are canceling the flights. Yeah. So they physically cannot deliver airmail. So you, you can only do express then like FedEx and yes. DHL. And uh, yeah. Luckily, uh, we have a contract with FedEx, which has a, a still a very nice price. So they have their own uh, logistics. So we can still manage that way. So now basically on our orders, we are upgrading our standard delivery to all express uh, FedEx shipments. 
And, and that, so, does that have any problems or does that come with problems or um, does that sort of solve the problem? With that the, mostly solve it. I think the delay was, you know, normally on Express, it takes two to three business days. Now it takes an additional two to three business days. So, you know, like within a week. So, so that's some, okay. Some sellers take insurance, like shipping insurance out, um, which is totally different from... Um, yeah, but it doesn't cover delays at all. Ouch. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we, we so, suffer a little bit on margins, but still, I think it's okay. I mean, just to make sure yeah. that everyone It's gets super it. interesting that given the fact that you're a global company selling yes. largely to um, the US, the UK, Singapore, Japan, mm-hmm. that, yeah. you know, for Q1, you were hardly ever affected. You know, you're just like a company based out in the, in, in the UK. Um, exactly. So the uncertainty ahead from businesses here, you know, mm-hmm. it's the same with you. Mm-hmm. We're, we're not really certain about the lockdowns yep. and um, right. yeah, the lockdowns essentially. What about your supply chain? When did, did you, um, now that China is working again, um, yes. is, is uh, supplies all sorted there or yes. um, do you uh, have any ba- challenges? Basically, I think all of our suppliers are back in business. Uh, they're all manufacturing. I think mm, they're catching up on the manufacturing. I think just initially during early weeks of March, there was a little bit of delay, but now they're largely normal mm. because a lot of these suppliers, when they come back to work, uh, actually a lot of orders were canceled. So they now have more time to do our business. Okay. So for us, they're catching up. So it's largely unaffected on our side. That was, uh, yeah. And, and are you, that's... do you have any contingency plans in regards to like overstocking? You know, kind of like how pe- you know, um, people all over the world have been sort of stockpiling stuff from, um, <laughs> from shops. From an e commerce yeah. standpoint, do you, do you feel the need or urge to just stockpile because of the uncertainty ahead? Actually, there was one project that was kind of nearly got to be delayed because we didn't have inventory during the early parts of the month. But we kind of changed the strategy from selling stock to doing a pre-order. So that solved everything. Makes so we, we tell people that this, the, the, the first batch will go out end of March. So initially when we were to launch that plan, we want to sell, you know, shipment direct uh, immediately. Mm-hmm. But then we changed the strategy to do pre-orders. Awesome. Awesome. So, on, uh, on the previous episode, you mentioned um, very briefly about how, you were um, launching a product um, in line with what is going on um, and in line with the emotions and um, yes. you know, caring. Could you shed some more light on, um, on what you intend to do over this crisis? Yeah, I think, as I mentioned, uh, there are always two sides to everything. So you can mourn about the virus. I mean, as a brand, uh, I don't think that people want to buy a watch when you mourn about the virus. I mean, you have to bring some happiness in in, in life. If you want to do a consumer product, you want, unless you're selling face masks, I, I don't think they care whatever you say. If you have stock, they will buy it. But if you're selling a consumer product, you, you, bread, you, you have to touch people's heart. So you will have to reach deep into the hearts what what matters at this moment. I mean, previously, maybe flashing a watch in front of other people. I have the limited edition. I have the most advanced, most expensive watch. But now, what's important in life is no longer money, no longer the, 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 all the commodity stuff, right? So it's about people, you know. You might lose someone, right? in this virus. I mean, look at Italy, you know, there's a high chance you will know someone who has lost someone, right? And we shouldn't advertise on this, you know, we shouldn't do that. But you can turn the table and say, you care for other people. I wouldn't say I care for you. I mean, technically, if you you see a brand say, oh, I, I care for you so much, but that's so fake, right? So we're not telling people, I care for you. I'm selling it. You should care for your loved ones, right? You should share some moments 
with your lo loved ones. You should share, you should maybe send a gift to someone you care. You're probably locked down in your house, but still FedEx can deliver a product to them. <laughs> so this is one way we will be taking our marketing uh, in the coming month, um, is to use a, a little surprise gift to someone you love, or maybe even to the medics who helped you, mm. uh, who cured you. I mean, that, that is something that I'm not taking advantage of the, 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 the virus, but it, it's to also really emotionally help people to get through it. Yeah. So, you know, of course, yes, we're doing business, but we, we are also struggling. You know, we, How, we I'm not trying, yeah. How's that going to translate in your communication? You know, so you, you said you, you, you work a lot on Facebook advertising, for instance. Right. So, so how are you going to say what you're saying now? Right. The general public. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What, what, what is the plan? You know, how, how, how are you going to do it? Right. So, so instead we were to... initially very product focused, you okay. know, showing the best materials, whatever workmanship we have. So like I initials would, and would it be personalized? Like, you know, write your, write the name of the person. Yeah. There, I mean, the, the like beautiful that. thing, beautiful thing about our customization is that we can print photos on the case backs. You know, then you can put photos of yourself. I mean, our marketing message will be then about the people, people you care, the, 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 the moments of life. You know, you can actually write initials on the dial. You know, if you are going to send this as uh, a gift to the medics that helps you, I mean, you can write that in, in, in their shows. You can write a message on the back for appreciation. And that, that is something that we will cater our marketing more on, you know, about, about people. So it will be less, it doesn't matter what watch you going to send them. It doesn't matter if it has the most accurate movement, right? It's about the message. Yeah. So I think we are going to change our marketing play more on this side. So we will do less product launches in the coming months. We will focus more on, uh, on the emotional self. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, on a final note, just to wrap up final question is, um, what tips would you give to listeners? Most listeners are either founders or marketers at e-commerce businesses of varying mm -hmm. sizes uh, right. to survive. And we're, there's no way any, hardly anyone's going to thrive unless you're selling essentials now, but to, yes. to just ride through, the crisis ahead and the uncertainty ahead? I think avoid doing discounts. I don't think unless you're going to liquidate things, you know, mm. un unless things are like 10 cents out of the dollar, mm. but you're not going to do that. So discounts are not going to work because you want to hang on to your money. Everyone wants, it's afraid of losing their jobs. It's afraid of the future. I think it's about reaching back down to, you know, what if it's you? I mean, you always have to be your own customer. Would you buy that? You know, when I talk to a lot of marketers, they're trying to pitch you a lot of things, but you know, essentially you ask them that question, would you buy it if, if, you, if, if you're the customer? You know, that's a question, whether during good times or bad times, it, it's a question that marketers should use. Are you gonna buy this? Mm. If the question is yes, Run it through a few more people, a few, a few other colleagues or, or friends. If they're going to buy it, that's the right strategy. Mm. Incredible, incredible stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for, you know, sharing your tips on your experience on, on the coronavirus, um, you know, crisis and, um, you know, what you're, you're going to be doing over the next quarter. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Stay um, safe. So guys, he's, he's from ondon.com. If you haven't listened to the previous episode, he was on there and he talked about the story about building, you know, an um, eight figure business, um, D2C. Um, yeah. Incredible stuff. Thank you.